Bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be honored. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. We bless the name of the Lord for this morning. He is a faithful and a wonderful God. We want to welcome our friends that are watching us from far, those that are watching us from UK, from US, from Saudi, everywhere you are most welcome. I'm going to request you to call a friend, to call a family member, so that we fellowship together this morning. Hallelujah. And for those that are here, we are so excited and happy that you have gathered with us. Hallelujah. And we believe and we know that we are overcomers in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Just put us hands together for the Lord. By the blood of the and the word of my test. Yes, we have overcome. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have overcome. Yes, we have overcome. Let me see the overcomers in the house. Praise the Lord. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of my test, yes, we have overcome. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus Christ, we have overcome. Now thanks be to God who gives us victory in the Lord. Because it's faithful. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, you have the victory. Yes, we triumph in this victory. Come on, let's celebrate it. By the blood of the Lord and the word of my death. Yes, we have overcome. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have overcome. Now, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who gives us victory. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory. Yes, we triumph in this victory. Let us celebrate. Victory. In the name of Jesus Come 
Lord, just go ahead and declare that he's good. Just go ahead and declare that he's a faithful God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. He reigns, Jesus. Jesus reigns. In victory. Yes. Jesus reigns. Reigns forevermore. In the name. I 
se eu não sou aí We've come to praise you, Whoa. we've come to love you, Whoa. we've come to honor you, for all things that you have done. We've come to praise you, Whoa. we've come to love you, Whoa. we've come to honor you, for all things that you have done. We've come to praise you, Whoa. we've come to love you, Whoa. we've come to praise you, for all things that you have done. Yeah, well, you are worthy of my prayer. Sa 
gave us your love, your unfailing love, that amazing love that's above every other love. We choose to worship you, Lord. Somebody there just meditate upon his love and goodness. Yeah. 
La Musa yo muntu wa muba vidi Muntu wa muba vidi basatu Oba weche gambo chesubi nitikato honda kwa gala Nange buwenti yon kwa gala Kato honda alina awe Sinso nga chicho olaba Oba weche cho itam Ochini mune kato honda No weche Ali wa muna awe mumbere yo Echukulu God is with you Katundari wa muna awe Muli nyeri ya Yesu Amen I told you everyday You need to declare your faith Weta agoku wa sanguzo kukiriza po Amen Faith and declare And declare does not work O kukiriza po ta sanguzi zate kukola That word you read The word of God you read Echikambu chakunu cha usoma it was written for us that we may speak it. People love to confess their sins. The, the Bible talks of many confession. Confess your faith. Be steadfast as you confess your faith. Don't change no matter what you see. No matter how you feel Wake up in the morning and confess it During the day If a cloud of doubt comes Be radical and confess it And then you blow it away we, we, we use the word of God To blow away the tide of that evil one Amen so are you ready? Say in the name of Jesus. It is written. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not laugh. It is written. I was young. I grow up. I never saw the right years for sick. No are your children begging for it. It is written that Christ is me and I am in him and all my being is in him it is written no weapon for it against me that we prevail it is written that I reign with Christ Jesus in the high places it is written that I tremble upon snakes scorpions and all powers of darkness it is written I am more than a conqueror I have surpassing victory through Jesus Christ who loved me it is written I am united with Jesus Christ he is on my side and who can be against me it is written and I come from glory to glory by the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in me he gives me far above beyond what I ask what I think what I imagine and even today I receive from the Lord what he has released for me in this service I receive it I possess it I get it in the name of Jesus it is written that I will speak to the mountains now in the name of Jesus I speak to every mountain before me live now be cast in the sea I speak to the mountain of sickness Every disease because in the sea, that mountain of poverty, mountain of love, I speak to you because in the sea, I speak to every trouble before me now. Be cast in a sea in the name of Jesus. Every mountain in my family go into that sea. Every mountain in the name of Jesus that has been troubling my children now. Hear my voice now. Be cast in a sea in the name of Jesus. I speak to every hindrance on my destiny. Give way now. Jesus is the way. 
I go forward by the Spirit of God. I flourish by the Spirit of God. I mount proud by the Spirit of God. I expand to the east, to the west, to the south, to the north by the Spirit of God. With Him, I cannot fail. In the name of Jesus, I have the power that resurrected Christ that dwells in me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. After that, you thank God. You thank Him. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We are now on a different level. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the word of God. Father, we thank you for this morning. It has never been and it will never be. Thank you that you are with us. We are leading us as we are opening the scriptures. We are understanding. We are revealing your heart to us. Send your word. Use us. Delivers us from this So today, you are delivering us. They know the power of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just have your seat. We love you in the love of Christ. And always remind you that you are not alone in that race. Life is a race. But you are not alone. Where you are, he is with you. Amen. Amen. So don't faint. Tozirika. Don't lose heart. For the great one is with you. Amen. Amen. Maybe there is nobody who greeted you this morning. That he greeted you. Whether you had his voice or not. He said, Hi. I love you. You are my child. Amen. Amen. So no matter what you are going through. No matter what has not worked out well. The good thing. Best thing. He is with you in that situation. And if he is with you, victory belongs to you. Amen. Sometimes there are things you don't understand. But he knows them. So the end of the matter. You'll be the one to laugh. The last laugh belongs to you. Say the last laugh belongs to me. I'll testify that God is faithful. That God is good. That God is awesome. In Jesus' name. Okay. We are continuing with what we have been sharing. That the cross changed everything. Today my focus is. The cross changed our lives. And even our destiny. I brought this before you. To put a picture inside of you. That before the cross. Life is different from after the cross. The challenge is. If you don't get this well. Maybe living in a new life in Christ. And still believe like the people before the cross. Jesus before he came and died for us on the cross. People struggled with sin. They were under prison of the evil one. They could do their best to be accepted. But after they totally failed. God in his great love. He sent 
Jesus Christ on the cross to justify us that we may be accepted back by the Father. Not because of what we do, but because of what Jesus did. If you believe in him, that is the good news. That is what we take to the world. But when we come in the church, the message changes. I hear everyone outside there who calls people to come to Jesus to receive salvation. But when we come to church, the message inside the church focuses on us, not on him. As you came to him by faith, so every day, everywhere, you live by faith. faith. In Jesus, what he did for you on the cross, he died for you, buried for you, he resurrected for you, and on that note, he resurrected in a new life. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Let me get some chairs. One white, green, blue. Amen. During the COVID time, I used to preach so many things here. And, and, the word. Word. and people could get it well. I had forgotten to do that. Amen. Put the fight to the side. Each one is the person who is born again. Amen. Amen. So let's go. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. The Bible says, Have you forgotten? Don't forget that when you were joined with Christ, Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death. So the person before he comes to the Lord Jesus, the dividing line is the cross that separates you old life to the new life. It's like uh, when you are crossing to another nation, you go through a border. From Uganda, Uganda, when you cross Katuna, you are no longer in Uganda. You are in Rwanda. Rwanda. When you cross Russia, Bosale, you are no longer in Uganda. You are in Kenya. Kenya. So when you come to the cross, Amen. Amen. that's where the old life dies from. And it symbolizes by what we do by taking people on the legs on the levers and baptizing that is a symbol of what happened in your spirit man this physical man does not change it's the spirit man that changes your spirit being. so it's that spirit man that is regenerated that is recreated that is elect that is born again Amen. So when they look at you, still you may look dark, brown, chocolate. Chocolate. Still the same height. But the day you came to Christ, five, ten, fifteen years ago, the person you were died. And when he died, he was buried. And as Jesus was resurrected, you resurrected to the new life. That's why I used 
different colors. That, that man before is born again. That man is living in sin. He's living in wickedness. He's bound by the evil one. That man is in the kingdom of darkness. That man is in Adam. That man is enslaved by curses. But Jesus paid a great price which we have underestimated. Let me repeat this. Jesus paid a great price which we have underestimated. It's my prayer that each and every believer gets the revelation of why the Cross. That will turn around your life. It will turn around your belief system. It will even turn around the way you pray. Because there are people who are still praying like those people in the Old Testament. We used to pray like that. Our pattern of prayer was. 30, 45 means of repentance. Confessing our sins. The sins of our ancestors. The sins of the people around us. Not knowing that when Jesus went to the cross. The reason he went there. He was a lamb of God. That was sacrificed for that us. That today. God cannot punish you when he punished your sins. For Jesus. Unless you refuse to believe that. And God is long suffering. God is long suffering. That he suffers long. <laughs> waiting for all of us that we come here before he sends his son back. All these fruits, the fruits in Galatians they just show us the nature of God. That God is love. God is peace. God is joy. God is kind. God is long suffering. God is self control. All those, they show us who God is. So he suffers wrong. He came and suffered for us. And even today we preach the gospel. And people don't accept that he still loves them. It is his love that prompts him to suffer for them. You get the message. That's the good news we have to preach. Thank God for those who have preached it. But many are not preaching that good news. So when you come here, the cross crosses your past life. The cross crosses your past files. The cross disconnects, cuts your umbilical cord from your past. And then you are given a new beginning. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 4, For you died, for we died. Say we died. You are still breathing. Why are you saying you died? <laughs> Does the Bible speak the truth? Yes. That old man died. Say the old man died. Died. And we are buried with Christ through the baptism. So if you died, 
and buried with Christ. It's like a woman who gets married and makes vows. When the husband dies, he is free from those vows. So all we did before we came to the cross, when we died on the cross, we were liberated from all of them. That is good news. The gospel is good news. The gospel <laughs> is good news. Jesus brought us the good news of the kingdom of God. And he told the disciples, go and preach the good news. God is good all the time. Even when he meets the worst sinner, he does not condemn him. Instead, he brings him back to him. As a matter of fact, he's the one who came to seek us. He's the one who came to seek us when we are helpless. In our sins, that we could not get ourselves out of them. Bound by religion, bound by laws, bound by our traditional worship bound by the gods of this world. But God, through the greatness of his love, he never wanted to rest, to rebuke, uh, how, how can I say? He didn't want to work on the old man. <laughs> he never wanted to work on that old youth. He said, this one is gone. Let me recreate you. I remember there is a man who had a muddy house. He tried to plaster it and put on a white color. But still cracks could come. And one day his son destroyed it and built a new house. That is what God did. That he never wanted to rehabilitate the old man. Does it make sense to you? He never wanted to work on the old man. Mm. He never wanted to repair the old you. We are too wicked. Too, too, too lost. Dumped and soaked in evil. And he said that man is too far. From my will, my purposes, my desires. Let me get rid of him. That now I recreate a new man. That's why the Bible says, Anyone in Christ Jesus, He is a new creature. The old is gone. And now everything is of God. The old is gone. Come and say with me, the old man gone. So we don't repent for the old man. We don't go to repent for our ancestors are the saints in heaven. No, the, our ancestors, the wicked ones. We are born again. We are now in a new lineage. We are now in a new family. We are now in a new clan. We connect with the saints of heaven. We are brothers and sisters with Jesus. He calls us his brothers. Amen. He is our elder brother. The first offering. 
the first fruit, the first one to resurrect, and we all resurrected with him. So if you are tracing your lineage, trace it from Jesus. No wonder the Bible says, He is our foundation. So he said, we died and we are buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. We were raised with him in Christ Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ah, no, chapter 2, verse 4. Amen. So the cross changed everything. It changed our nature. It changed our destiny. We are destined to the wrath of God. All citizens of hell. And the good news today, we are all citizens of heaven. We reign with him in the high places. You see how God is good? When we say God is good, that all the time is good, not because of this material benefits. He did for us what money cannot offer us. He did for us what people could not offer for us. He did for us what you could not get in this world. He offered the best of the best for us. By destroying the old man and then gave you a new man in him. So he says, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much. God is so rich. He's a merciful God. His nature is merciful and love. In verse 5, it says in verse 5 that even though we are dead because of our sins, this man before he comes to the cross is dead in sins. But when he comes to the cross, he gets an excuse. Before the cross, before you come to Jesus, you were dead in sin. But when you come to Jesus, he takes your sin and you receive his righteousness. He who was sinless, he took our sin and we took his righteousness. He paid for our sin, which you want to go and repent for, was catered for on the cross. Say amen. If you want to go, go and, and, and repent for them. That's a sign you have not got a revelation of the cross. When he came to the cross, he came there because of me and you. Blameless man. In him there was no sin. No wickedness at all. But because the wages of sin is death, he had to die that we may cross from death to life. He took our place and then we took his place. His father left him as he had left us. Where sin is, the father cannot dwell. When man sinned, he lost the relationship with God. So Jesus on the cross, from noon up to three, the, the light of the world was swallowed up by darkness. Now he had taken over the sins of the whole world. All placed upon him. That is the good news. 
nothing could take it our weeping our cries he ended them on the cross before he came man was weeping he was seeking for a savior. He tried to sacrifice every kind of animal. But it could not remove man's sins. That's why they could do it every, every, every other year. But the good news is, Jesus paid it for it once and for all. That's why I don't fear to say that your past sins were paid for, your present sin were paid for, and your future sins were paid for. Does that, does that encourage you to go and sin more? Even if you could have wanted it, the sinful nature was destroyed. Now you have a godly nature. The nature that could send you to swim and enjoy sin died on the cross. That today everything evil even if it passes before you, you don't enjoy it. You don't desire it. The old you who used to drink ten crates of beer. The new you, even if he looks at it, he doesn't say, I regret I got born again. Because now this new, new nature is a godly nature. They don't overcome sin by telling you how much sinful you are. They overcome sin by telling you what Jesus did. That as you believe it, you grow into the full stature of Christ. And sin will never have a lot in your life. The more you get to know him, the more you believe in him, the more you live like him. Should I repeat that? The more you get to know him, the more you believe in him, and the more you behave like him. Say so they don't tell you to change behaviors. Jesus never came to change our behavior. He came to give us a new life in him. So the more you get to know him, the more you believe in him, the more you believe in him, the more you live, walk, and behave like him. Amen. Shall we together? You are, be, you are blessed to know this. Because I find people struggling with sin. Because they don't know this truth. Even two weeks ago, a, a woman came and cried before me. She had fallen into a sin of adultery. And she never knew how to walk out. But she was surprised because she thought she's shocking me. <laughs> but she showed me laughing from the beginning to the end. She looked at me laughing and I told her about Christ. I met her after a few days and she said, I am a different woman. Amen. The power of sin was dealt with. So the more we get to know him, the more we live in victory over Sin. The more they tell you of, of sin, the more sin gets grips of you. 
Or in other words, the more they, whatever they tell you, whatever you hear most, whatever you learn about most, is what we get hold of you. Even this daily life, the fans of football, they hear much, much, much about football. Watch, watch more of football. Know all the names of the sitters in, in every club. So they are enslaved by that. Even those of politics, that is their meditation. That is their conversation. That is what they hear most. And they get <clears throat> enslaved by it. So you overcome a habit by introducing a new habit. You break it by now starting to focus and develop a new habit. Does it make sense? So you overcome sin by getting to know more about Jesus. As you get to know more about him, the holy fire, passion of Christ rises deep into your soul and then sin will not have a lot in you. So he said he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Whenever you see grace, it means you have no input. So he paid it all without my input. Mine is just to receive. Mine is just to receive salvation, new life in Christ. We need to learn how to receive what God did for us. Many times we pray, we ask, but I think we haven't taught you how to receive. This new life in Christ is a life of learning to receive. The complete life you received in Christ. Amen. Amen. So, by God's grace, maybe in future, I'll do a series entitled, How Do You Receive What Is Already Yours? How do you receive what is already yours? Salvation, deliverance, healing, prosperity, all those things, internal life, is already ours in Christ. We have it in Christ. We just need to learn how do we receive what we already have. Ha, how do we receive what God has already provided to us in Christ that you don't labor to receive what is already yours. You just need to know how do you receive what has already been given to you. So he says in verse 6, that 6 says, for he raised us. He raised us. He raised you and me. Remember, when we come to the cross, we die with him. And they bury us with him. Who baptized you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He was burying you up. 
with Christ that was just a symbol that you have believed in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. So you were just demonstrating it. No, baptism, you were just demonstrating your faith. But there are people who go to heaven before they are even baptized. Like, baptism will never hinder you to go to heaven. And there are people who receive the Holy Spirit before. They are. The man who died with Jesus on the cross, he said, I'll be with you. The house of... The house of... <laughs> <laughs> of, the, of Cornelius <laughs> before they were baptized <laughs> they were baptized by the Holy Spirit <laughs> baptism is just a symbol like we do Holy Communion <laughs> you are showing <laughs> like as we wed people in church <laughs> we wed them we join them. And we put a link, they put a link on each other. That is just a symbol. Amen. So baptism is a symbol that I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And he died with me. The best word is not for me. The best word is Jesus died with me on the cross. That is more spiritual. So when you get it, instead of saying he died for me, you say Jesus died with me on the cross. That way you will remind you that now the life you live is no longer the old life. If you have got it, then say it again and I hear. Jesus died for you. Jesus died with me on the cross. And Jesus was buried with me in the grave. And Jesus was raised with me. And now I'm seated with him on the right hand of the Father. That's good news. That's the truth of the gospel. If you get this clear, there are things you say that is no longer me. If now Apostle Chimuri comes and he finds me here and he says, now go and break the altars of your ancestors, break the covenants you made, change your name, go and ask your mother what, hap what happened when he was going to conceive you. I will tell Apostle Chimuri that my brother, I love you so much. But you need to get born again. For I died with Christ. The man who made covenants with demons was buried five, seven, ten years ago in the water where they baptized me. But the truth is he died with Christ 2,000 years ago. He said he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly rings because we are united with Christ. There is no, no revelation here. You just need to believe it. 
in the kingdom of God in this new life where we are now we live by faith no matter how you feel no matter how people see no matter how much they know in your past you just have to say Isaac raised from the dead with Jesus and he's seated with him in the heavenly places because I'm united with Jesus and nothing can separate our union with him. No demon can separate. That's why he says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Nothing will ever separate you from the love of Christ. You are united with it life and life forever. You are united with the endless life. You stepped into eternity forever. You are now in him and he is in you. You are joined with him and hidden in God. That is Colossians 3.3. 3. Two more scriptures. Colossians 3.3. 3. He said, for you die to this life. So when you came to Christ, you died from this life. And you were married to a new life. And he says that your real life, in other words, he's saying that true life, the previous one was not a true life, the previous one was dead. You had died in sin. But Thank God Jesus resurrected you. He says today, your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. So even when a witch comes and says, you, you cannot work here. You cannot build your house. He cannot this. You look at him in the face and say, I am not alone. The greater one is with me. The biggest is with me. The strongest is with me. For I am hidden in Christ. Hidden with Christ in God. I am united. Say with me. I am united with Christ and hidden in God. So if you believe it, that will be your confession. As others are confessing their sin, confessing your position. As we could spend 30 minutes confessing our sins. Now let us spend hours confessing who we are. Where we are. That I'm now united with Christ Jesus. And I'm hidden in God. I died with him. Buried with him. Reselected with him. I am now seated with him. If you could confess your sins every day for, 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 how, many, for how long? That means 40. 45. Even those you, you had confessed yesterday, you could, you could repeat them today. Even those you repented when you were fasting. 
Even you could repeat them the following day when you are not fasting. So now confess your faith in Christ. Don't lose your profession confession. That is what Hebrews 3 1 says. That every day wake up and take means hours and say what Jesus is to you. What he did to you. Where he pressed you. Now. So he says, so dear brothers and sisters who belong to God, come and say, I belong to God. Who are partners with those called to heaven? Say, I am a partner with those called to heaven. Think carefully about this man, Jesus. Whom we declare. We declare. Declare him. Every day. Declare him. To be God's messenger and high priest. Declare, profess it. Give me King James. King James says, profess it. Amen. Aha, this is good. Confess. He says, therefore, holy brethren, holy brethren, holy brethren, say, I am a saint. I am holy in Christ Jesus. Partakers of the heavenly calling. Say, I am a partaker of a heavenly calling. Again, say, I am a partaker of a heavenly calling. I am a saint. I am holy. A partaker of the heavenly calling. That's how he addressed these people. That you are, you are holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Cons consider the apostles and the high priest of our confession. That Jesus Christ. Confess him every day. As you used to confess your sins. Now confess what he did on the sins. Hebrews 4, 16, 14. No, 14, I think. 14. Amen. The cross changed your life and your destiny. And we know that through what you say. What you confess. Aha. Uh -huh. He said, so then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firm to what we believe. King James says, let us hold firm to our confession. I love that. Let us hold firm Fast to our confessions. Before I came to the revelation of the cross, I knew that the Bible has only one confession. First John chapter 1 verse 9, confess your sins. But there is another confession that when you come to the cross, you confess Jesus. Amen. He said he's the Lamb of God that was sacrificed for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for I died with you, buried with you, resurrected with you, now seated on the right hand of the Father, 
Because of your great love I am now united with you And nothing Will separate me with you That is confession That as you could confess That so many 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 sins Now you confess That so many 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 Works of Jesus to redeem you that now you are united with him with nothing that can separate you. How many of you used to confess your sins that that means? An hour? <laughs> ah, ah, an hour is too long. <laughs> so now, at least if you haven't got it right, at least combine that two. Until when you get it. And now you take more than two hours. Confessing Christ. Whatever you believe and confess is what you receive. Do you know that possession starts by confessing? Hmm? Possession starts by confessing. And then possession is sustained by confessing. And then possession flourishes by steady first confession. Should I repeat that? Possession. Remember Romans 10. 17. You believe with your heart unto the righteousness and you confess unto salvation. So you don't stop the day you confess. You keep stenting. Romans 10. You confessed yesterday that I am born again even today even tomorrow you have to confess it so you receive you sustain you flourish by your steady first confession so if I lead you to Christ today tomorrow say I'm born again even the other day, I'm born again. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Don't doubt your faith. No matter what you don't see, no matter what you feel, you confess what the word of God says. That is what I told you when I was opening the service. That the word of God was confessed before it was written. And it was written for us that we get to know what to confess. Does it make sense? In the beginning there was the word. And the word was with God. So it was there and then they spoke it. And it was written. Why was the word written? Come on, talk to me. Why was it written? That we may confess it. Why do we read the word? That we confess it. Amen. It was written for people to speak it. We read it that we get what God wants us to speak. Amen. 
This is the truth. That the word of God is in your mouth. Carries the same power. As the word of God in his mouth. Should I repeat that? The word of God in your mouth. Carries the same power. As the word of God in in his mouth if you believe what you speak so he says for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so you come to salvation through faith and confession you continue in salvation through faith and confession you flourish in salvation as you continue to confess what Jesus did for you Amen. So even when you are in public prayer or private prayer, confess your belief system. Say what Jesus did for you. Say, oh God, I thank you that you were with me because of what Jesus did. I am forgiven. I am united with Christ. No matter what I'm going through, I am glad. I am with you in this thing. In this issue we are together. In this situation we are together. In this, in this circumstances we are together. So the final scripture is Galatians 2. 20 and 21 it says Galatians 2 20 and 21 I have been crucified with Jesus isn't that what I told you so as you say he died for me now grow to this level that I died with him he was crucified with me. Again, I told you confession, you are now getting saved. Okay, go and confess the sin of your ancestors. Go and cry for them. The believers confess with me. Say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who believe, who live. It is not me who live. It is not the old man who live. But Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Man who loved me and gave himself for me. That is now your confession. As you confess it, you receive it. As you continue to confess it, you grow into it. As you continue into it, you walk it, you live it, you, you see the fruits of your confession. Go and confess the sins of your ancestors and see whether you become this. Confess the word. Because you are holy. You are saint. You are a heavenly partaker. You are a citizen in heaven. You are now on this other side of life. Because of that, confess it. So let us stand up and we confess it together. One, two, three, we stand up. One, two, three, we go.
Amen. Why was this scripture written? Amen. Before everything was, the word was, and then it was spoken, and the unseen became visible. So God gave us all these scriptures that we confess them. As we confess them, we get our salvation. We get our healing. We get our deliverance. We prosper in him. We see the life of Christ growing and manifesting in our lives. But you take that means confessing what is not in the Bible. You take another hour calling all that demonic atmosphere. Then when will you experience the life of Christ? The life of, of Christ is experienced through believing the word and you speak it, you confess it steadily. So one, two, three, we go. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, even the spiritual atmosphere has changed because you have confessed the word. Amen. So one more time louder. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. So when you go home, Get all the scriptures you learn from the church, the Bible. And confess them. Instead of taking that means dealing with the past sins, going for the territorial, whatever, confess the word. Pro be steadfast. Confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it. And your life, your atmosphere will change. Your family will change. Your finances will change. Your health will change. The peace of God will embless you. The joy of the Holy Spirit will fill you. Because you are speaking the word. It changes everything in and around you. That's how we live and survive in this new life after the cross. Thank God if you have got it. I said thank God, not clap. But you can lift your hands to the King of Kings. To the Lord of Lords and say, Lord, I thank you for your love, for your mercy. Thank you for loving us, that you are revealing the truth to us. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit, for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Spirit of God, for what you have done in our lives. Through your word, thank you, Jesus, that we died in you, died with you, buried with you, resurrected with you. Thank you, Jesus, for even, even, we shall worship you. We are blessed because of you. I'm blessed because I'm united with God. I'm blessed because God is on my side. God is in me. God 
and is for me. I am blessed. I am healed. I prosper in the name of Jesus. I flourish by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever I worship you, in you I live and move and have my being. I crucified with you. It's no longer I who live. I live in you and you live in me. And this life I live, I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me, died in me, died for me, died with me, buried for me, buried with me, resurrected for me. I resurrected him and now I seated with him in the right hand of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Forever and ever, you are mine. Forever and ever, I am your. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just have your seats. Thank you for coming. We love you. Amen. So today, we want to show you the people who will be leading this year. Let me ask Pastor Vicky Chomwendo to come here. Where is she? Sister Vicky Chomwendo is our resident pastor. She's over here. Day and night. 24-7. So in case you want any pastoral help, she's the one as our resident pastor. Amen. I'm always in and out. So come here. She's going to be assisted by Pastor Lydia Mwesigwa. Lydia is not here. She went out of the country last night on other responsibility. So under her we have different heads of departments. Youth, we have Walugembe Brian. Come very fast here. The judges. Baba the, the, the senior citizen. Eldaka is here. Just come here. Brian, come here. So every youth, you just come talk to him. Introduce your gift, introduce your ministry. And see how we can work together. And advance the kingdom. This is not about him, not about me. It is kingdom. Business. All elders. They start at what age? All of you. We have this father. He also goes through different departments. Teaching us. How we should grow. And we remain fearing God. Then the professionals. Adeline. 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 Hallelujah. So all professional people, engineers, doctors, teachers, drivers, skilled, we go out to minister as professionals and she's the one leading us. Meet her and introduce your passion, your gift. Explain to her how you can serve the Lord with your profession. Then the married Mr. and Mrs. Chinji. 
Vaya Day. The married. Abafumbo. The married. Abafumbo. We will love our, our families through this couple. We have seen and observed them. They love the Lord. They walk with the Lord. And they will help us. Amen. So the married people, if you have any issue, just come. Just come. If you, you can come to Mrs., you can come to Mr. They will help you. And we will be with them. See that we continue in serving the Lord. Our singles, Mr. and Mrs. Chimuri, they have to, Mr. and Mrs. Chimuri, those are, no, those are married people who are going to carry the bus of the singles too. The, amen. <laughs> so we don't want to find any single here by 2024 this time. <laughs> if it means fasting, fast, pray, do everything. Meet everyone and ask why are you not married? Why are you not married? Give them all the tricks as the spirit leads you that by 2024 by this time we not have any single person who is in that Amen. Then Mrs. Bakavrin did not have for the women. Ah. Kajegere. Zemita. Mama Kajegere. Mama Kajegere. Mama Kajegere. Hallelujah. Mama Bakavrin did not all women, we have different activities in the women department. She's equipped. She can connect. There are so many treasure wealth in her that can help women. Then the children church. Now Kenya Dola. Devula. Devula. She's a professional teacher. She loves the Lord. She has a team of teachers. So if you have any issue about the children, you just go and see her. Then we have one more office under Musumba Viki. That is for the men. Mr. Chinji will be standing in that office. He has not yet finished that work. Amen. So we pray for this and then we I introduce a new team, another team. Stretch your hands. We pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, promotion come from you, leadership come from you, and Lord, by ourselves we can do nothing. But the good news is, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Brothers and sisters, Christ lives in you. The wisdom of God, the power of God, the favor of God is upon you. Go and do far above and beyond by the Holy Spirit what we expect from you. Then the glory of God. God will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good time. Then let me get another one here. I have evangelism. Pastor Muyingo Habat. Habat. 
He has a working committee I will not introduce here. Let him stand there. He's a man behind all our missions and our churches outside. So he has a working committee. He's developing his working with. Then we have Pastor Soz Joram. He's the one behind our administration. Then he works with our resident administrator, Mazinga Lilian. Then the head of Ashalink. Chimbugwe Jo. jo. And the head of Ashalin, uh, the head of media, is Sembatia. Where are they? You come in his docket. So everything regards administration it's behind this group. He's the pastor in charge of all of them. So when they mess you up, get him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the head of Asherlink. If you want to join Ashers, we are recruiting now a new breed of Ashers. This month before our prophetic. So if you want to serve God with us, you can afford on Sunday or Saturday or on Wednesday, any day. It can be one day or two days. Just see him. Then Ivan is our media guy. If you know how, how do they call it? Photoshopping. Shooting, photo shooting, camera, camera work, streaming, streaming. What else do they do? Videography, editing. We have so many television and radios. So you just come. We want to give everyone an opportunity that we serve the Lord. Don't just be a member. Be part of the active team. So you just approach him. He's a good man. He will help you. And their pastor will help you as well. If you have any issue on that side, that is the group. Let us bless them they live. Father, in the name of Jesus, we died with you. It is no longer us who live, but Christ lives in them. We believe that you're going to do a great, awesome, mighty job through these people as they lead us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Great. So now we have the pastor in charge of our finances. He has a team I can only build. I will not call them here. You can track them. <laughs> if you want to know his team, you just go to his office. He works with a team of four people. Mrs. Migade Nabawanda, that team, I am not inviting them here. Because finance is something very sensitive. Mm, so if you are not comfortable with the, anything going on in finances, not me. Not. All our accounts are. Ah. He, know, he knows what goes there. What gets out. 
And where he go, where it goes, accountability. Amen. So now I want to call the pastor in charge of music intercession. That is my wife, prostituta. Mokubidanze, Mokubidaye. Social is him. So, because she's a pastor, she works with the head of worship team. Then Josephine Kasasa. Then the head of intercession. Walkesi Agnes and the head of instruments Uncle Paul he's not also in, he's not in the country so this so we are also recruiting for our music if you have a voice you have a skill in the instruments what else do they do in music? You can dance. There are those who are there not to sing. But just to dance. So you just come and see. You come and dance. You have that gift. Amen. What do you think about it? So you come and we dance for the Lord. So come, they will tell you the details. Then intercession. It's here every day. She will tell you the details. They have their committees. <laughs> and the instruments. You want more people to be in charge of our instruments. Come and let, let, let us know how you can serve us. Amen. Then and the last group, not but not the least, that is the pastor in charge of monitoring and evaluation. Overall. Pastor Bruce Impamizo. She's not in the country. You wait for him. Just come here. We pray for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So which is the one and is assisted by Dr. Waludia Gerard. Kale. <laughs> Kale, let us stretch our hands, we bless them. The scripture we are using and you died. Christ lives in you. And because he lives in you, he will enable you. He will empower you. Give you wisdom. Quicken you. Favor you. Bring the right people to you. Right machines and right things. And you will do the work effectively. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So the ministry is open from today that you want to join, you just see those people. And very soon we cross the door. Amen. Amen. Is that okay? You want to appreciate your giving, your prayers. Because of your giving and your prayers, we have come this far and we are going somewhere. Amen. Amen. Just get your offering and we'll pray. How many of you, it's your first time to come here? Stand up, we welcome you. 
Mwimedide tubakubile kumungalu. Akaluru akamanyi. Tisanyiso kubalava. Thank you for coming. Tisanyiso balava. Mwibare kujia. Tisanyiso balava. You are most welcome. Omukisa kwa katonda. Ulunchi wa mkama. Tisanyi ya katonda. Chivele na mwibudi wa mnavera. Wherever you will be. Marinyari ya yes. In the name of Jesus. How many of you came to get saved? You have never gotten saved. You want to give your life to Jesus. You came here to get saved. Just put up your hand. God loves you so much. Today is the day of your salvation. If you want to give your life to Jesus, we want to pray with you as a church. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Said today, I have received the word. Now I am giving my offering, my tithe, my, my seeds in the name of Jesus. God, you are so faithful. I don't give in vain. There is a great reward I receive in Christ. God is my reward in Jesus' name. Amen. So next Sunday, we'll be going to the prisons. So I told you to bring me an offering, a special one, a big one. That we do the word of God. That when Jesus said I was in the prison, no one visited me. He will remember that that Sunday we are there. So all of us, we cannot go physically. But later support will be there. So as you give today, give. And we have our phones there. If you don't have it today, you can send it in a course of the week. Our budget is three million. And we have more than 300 people here. If each one of you can give me 10,000. Is that possible? 10,000. Each one of you. That will be done. 